In this video, I review my new custom video editing PC as well as share a few tips on what to look for in a video editing computer. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Think Media TV. Help you go further, faster in media. And on this channel, we do tech gear reviews, video gear reviews, as well as computer reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during this video, I'll list out everything that I talk about in the video, all the specs of the computer, as well as links that you can check out and anything like that. Let's jump into the review. So recently my main editing computer died. I actually hadn't upgraded since 2009, which was probably a little bit too long. And so at first I kind of panicked. I actually went to Fry's locally here to look for a computer, horrible experience. Ended up buying one, returned it. It just wasn't right, it was too expensive. So I actually found this computer on Amazon. And what I love is you can actually pick up this exact uh, computer, spec'd out a certain way, just ready to ship out on Amazon. And so I'll put links to the Computer Upgrade King site there. But what's also cool is their site itself offers more customizability if you wanna go and literally piece by piece put together the machine exactly how you want and upgrade different parts. So ultimately what I wanted was a computer that would of course crush HD video editing. My last one did that. Um, but I also wanted to be able to edit 4K as well. So I was kind of going for a 4K build. And what I ended up getting was the Sentinel. That's the case, I believe. And uh, I love the matte black. It also comes in white. It has a sixth generation Intel Core i7 uh, four gigahertz processor and an NVIDIA 1088 gigabyte GDDR5 memory, uh, which is huge, right? One of the reasons why I wanted to go with NVIDIA cards is because it leverages the Mercury playback engine in Premiere Pro. So I edit on Premiere Creative Cloud, and because you have that NVIDIA card, it actually moves some of the real-time rendering onto your video card. And that's been out for quite a while, but I wanted to be able to just crush that. So I got that card. This uh, computer's actually liquid cooled. And so it's really intended as a gaming computer and you know maybe overclocking, but actually it's super practical for me because especially living in Vegas during the summer, it gets so hot and I've noticed a lot of electronics can heat up your room depending on the airflow in your home office or wherever you are. So I've noticed that it just stays like completely cold even in the midst of like really intense renders because it's liquid cooled. So it's a great benefit. Um, it's got a killer MSI motherboard uh, and it has a lot of cool features. I think one of the most important things for me was having um, the USB ports, a lot of USB 3.0 ports, but also USB 3.1 generation two. So that's the new USB. It's not even super relevant yet or not. There's not a lot of perpetuals or accessories for it yet, but it's, I think, 10 times faster than typical USB 3.0. I think it's even faster than Thunderbolt. Somebody tech out there, you could probably correct me with the specifics, but definitely something cool to be a little bit future-proofed. 64 terabytes of RAM, 64, 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, which is pr definitely probably overkill, but great to have. A one terabyte SSD drive, that's where the operating system is. And then a second one terabyte SSD drive, that's where all the media files are gonna go. And I'll talk about more about that in a second. And then a four terabyte hybrid drive um, for data, that's all internal. And then I've got a lot of externals uh, cause I haven't really migrated much of my content over yet. So that's the specs of that computer, but here's what you should really look for in a video editing computer and sort of my thinking, whether you would wanna check out something like this or anything at all you know, in a video editing PC. Number one is the processor. At the end of the day, a lot of the heavy lifting of video editing simply takes place on the pro uh, processor. You know, I thought about doing the uh, hexa-core, uh, but this processor is crushing. But one thing that you want is as much processor speed as possible. And so this definitely is killing that. The second thing is a multi-drive workflow. Like if you want to do for, uh, 4K editing or any video editing and you want speed, you want a multi-drive workflow. And so basically how this is set up is you want your operating system on one drive, preferably an SSD drive. Then you actually want your data files. So where you tell your video editing software to save your working files, the project files, the render files, you can just assign that in your settings. 
You want that on a separate drive and you want that drive to be fast as well. So I've got the two SSDs, pro you have the OS and the software's on one, you got the project files on another. And then the third, actually, if you wanna do 4K, this is one of the variables and I'm not quite there yet, but they actually, uh, people would recommend, I'll, I'll link up an article that actually breaks down in detail what you should really look for in a 4K machine. They really recommend that you have um, a, a data stripe, like a RAID array of drives and tons of speed on your actual files for 4K. HD doesn't really get affected at all. Um, and so in this case, I'm either editing off of a USB 3.0 on an external hard drive, which is not the best, or um, on those internal drives. And so a multi-drive workflow will make a huge uh, difference in your editing performance. Um, the next thing that I was really looking for was the USB uh, 3.0 ports. You know, obviously you wouldn't be watching this video if you were interested in a Mac workflow, um, but definitely having, you know, every, think about it like this, every piece in the chain could bottleneck your workflow. So maybe some of the things are fast, but the external hard drive you're editing off of is on a slower connect connection. It's on old USB where it's not a very fast drive. And so all of those connections were huge. And then once a USB uh, 3.1 generation two is more relevant, um, I'm going to be leveraging that for even greater speed, similar to what Thunderbolt would be. And then, you know, I think the last thing that I look for was the aesthetic. You know, I really like the, the, the quality, the matte black of this particular case, the look of the whole thing. And so that really stood out to me as well. And I think that is, you know, definitely something I'm sure you appreciate as well and what you're looking for. Uh, but when, you know, building a PC, thinking about the look of your whole environment, because it's going to be something that you're going to probably be using for a long time. So as far as some things I still need, I'm keeping my same monitors. You know, one thing with editing 4K is technically if like you don't have 4K monitors, um, then you know, you're not really getting the full experience. So my monitors, I, I need to upgrade those at some point and then probably do something like network area storage um, super fast for data files as I move more into 4K. So far, the renders of HD are just smashed. Like it just devastates HD files. If we wanna export like a 10 minute file, it's only like a few minutes out of Premiere Pro CC. And so this computer is obliterating, you know, HD. Um, you know, one thing that can speed up your workflow is if you convert your files. Because if you if compressed files off of like a DSLR and some GoPro files and stuff, they're so heavily compressed they actually edit really slow. But at, but for our workflow, we don't change file formats at all. We just throw whatever content straight onto the Premiere timeline and just work on it. So it's crushing HD. 4K it does fine with. Edited some uh, DJ Mavic 4K footage edited some uh, G7, Panasonic G7, 4K footage all together. And it took, it was about minute for minute on the um, export. So if, like a 10 minute video file, it took about 10 minutes to export um, and render out. And so it's crushing all of that really, really well. And one other super cool thing about uh, Computer Upgrade Kings was actually their warranty. So like I said, I actually had to pay extra for the Fry's warranty. Not only was it cheaper, but they include this and it comes with like this super cool sticker that says, hey, warning, product may contain performance enhancing upgrades, side effects may include, uh, include but not limited to, faster computer, fewer explicitives yelled while waiting for your computer to load, and an additional three year warranty on upgraded parts and three years of diagnostics. It's really, not only do they have like killer prices, a great experience, everything, you know, through ordering and, and just customer service has been amazing. But the fact that they include that warranty, which normally would be multiple hundreds of dollars somewhere else to have all your parts, you know, if your graphics card goes out or something happens with your motherboard for three years just included is super killer. So then also just to kind of talk about my experience with Computer Upgrade Kings, I really fell in love with these guys and this website, you know, especially after having a bad experience at Fry's. And, and actually the computer I bought cost the same, it actually ended up costing more. I added a, a warranty uh, thing for a couple of years that covered parts, you know, if, if the graphics card died or anything. And it all came out to about $2,300 there uh, with, with the promo code um, that they usually have on Computer Upgrade Kings and all that stuff. This one came out to about $2,100. And, you know, you might be thinking too, uh, to build yourself or not to build. Could you save some money if you buy everything separately, 
put it together yourself, of course, but I'm kind of at a place, especially with life and business and work and everything that's happening, where I was just like, I just want this done for me, done right. And so what I love about Computer Upgrade Kings is that, again, they're going to build out machines for you. I actually just ordered a laptop from them as well. So anyways, if you wanna check them out, definitely, um, uh, you could, there's links in the description and you can use the promo code THINKMEDIATV and you can get 5% off your entire order, uh, which is super cool. So this video actually, it's not sponsored and I bought this computer, I bought the laptop, but I loved them so much, I actually emailed them and said, hey, could we do something if anybody uh, wants to uh, check you guys out on Think Media TV?" And so uh, they said absolutely. So if you use that, that code, you can get 5% off and they've got a ton of stuff. Again, a lot of their stuff is oriented more towards gaming I love the fact that it's kind of a both and thing uh, with this setup. It did come with Gears of War 4. I'm not really a gamer, but I've been playing Gears of War and this thing just smashes gaming, obviously. Um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but in the process, check out what they have. I'll throw some links in the description. Think Media TV is the promo code. That'll get you 5% off. Question of the day, what do you look for in a video editing custom build? Let me know in the comment section below and remember that some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media TV community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV Video Gear Buyer's Guide, it actually goes through all the best cameras, lighting, microphones that I use to create YouTube content and online videos. So you can grab that for free. We'll link it up on the YouTube card as well as in the description below. Well, until next time, Think Media TV is helping you go further, faster in media. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.